In this video, I'm going to give a definition of intents and how they're used in the Android operating system. First, a shout out to Casey Tritt. Casey Tritt was a student in one of my very first Android courses at the University of Cincinnati. And after graduation, he became a professor at UC and also ended up teaching Android. I ran into him in the hallway one time as I was heading to my class and he was heading to his. And I told him, Casey, I need to find a really good way to explain intents. And he said, oh, yeah, I have a presentation. Let me share it with you. So a lot of what you see in this presentation came from Casey, which I think is a neat story. A student of mine who became a professor, and then we collaborated to make this presentation that I still use to this day, naturally with a few modifications to keep it up to date. Thanks, Casey. I'll start with this definition of intents that comes to us from Android, and then after that I'm going to jump into an animation. So the definition, a passive data structure holding an abstract description of an operation to be performed, or often in the case of broadcasts, a description of something that has happened and is being announced. You can read that over and over again, and it probably won't make much more sense than it did after reading it the first time. So let's break it down and make this a bit simpler. A passive data structure holding an abstract description of an operation to be performed. In other words, I want to do something. Maybe I want to toggle the camera. Maybe I want to play a video or anything else like that. That is an abstract description of what wants to be performed. Now, after the dash, we have a whole other business case for this, which is, or often in the case of broadcasts, a description of something that has happened and is being announced. So think about having your Android device starting up your car that has Bluetooth enabled, and your Android device automatically detects the Bluetooth. That's the last part of this definition. It is an Android device that is aware of its environment and aware of changes to its environment, like Bluetooth, like Wi-Fi is available, like plugged in charging, or any of the other environmental things that can happen to our device. So an intent is our way of specifying something that we want to happen and how the system will respond. And we can declare an intent very simply in the Kotlin programming language. We declare it just like so, although we might need to pass in some parameters in this constructor signature. So a few different ways that we can activate components. An activity is something that the user can see. It could be a single screen or a series of screens within our own application. More on that in just a moment. Or it could be the look and feel of an outside component that we want to use, like the camera. Think about toggling the camera. It brings up a viewfinder that shows you what picture the camera is going to take, so that's a different look and feel. Next, a service. These are things that run in the background, like GPS, getting location information you can get with the service. And then broadcast receiver is a neat one. In this case, you're subscribing to events from outside. As I mentioned before, could be Bluetooth connected, could be that Wi-Fi is available, it could be that the phone has a low battery or the phone is plugged in charging. This is one of the coolest things about Android, if you ask me. And when I started programming Android, I didn't really understand why I would need a broadcast receiver. But then I met with a colleague who was an Android developer in the early days of Android, and I asked him what he liked about Android, and he said, broadcast receivers. And I asked why, he said, because my application can respond to events that are occurring without the user's input. In the case I gave earlier, you get in your car, automatically your phone syncs to your Bluetooth in your car, you don't have to press any buttons, it's automatic. That's where broadcast receivers are really cool. Let's start by taking a look at an activity. And this has changed a bit over time. If you go to pre-model view view model, an activity was analogous to a single screen on your application. So let's think pre-MVVM, when we had model view controller, we would have an activity and it would have a model or data. And the activity was essentially taking that data and showing it to the user through an XML layout. Now, if we needed to change screens, we would fire an intent, and inside of that intent, we could pass extras. And the extras would sometimes be some type of data, or at least something we could use to look up more data, and that would create a new activity or a new screen. That new screen would have its own model. If we need to go from there to another screen, yet another activity, that we fire with an intent. Now, this is going to be an explicit intent. Because within our application, we're saying explicitly which activity we want to go to. 
This is what we used in Android from 2010 through about 2018, maybe even 2019. So this was with us for a very long time. It was a bit brittle though, because you notice that each screen had its own activity, each activity had its own data, and then we had to pass some value from one activity to another. Now, you can still do this. Absolutely, that's fine. And it will still work. And what you'll often find is the case is that you jump into an Android project that was written long ago and you're adding more stuff to it. There might be some legacy stuff there like this intent and extra that you see here. So still definitely worth knowing. But let me show you, given that, let me show you a newer model that we use with model view view model that's a bit less cumbersome. So we still have the concept of an activity. And the activity is associated with a view model or possibly multiple view models. And that represents the data that we're showing to the user. Now what the activity does is it coordinates these different looks and feels through different fragments that the user sees. The nice thing is the fragments share the same view model. So you don't have to be in the business of passing data from one screen to another. Now, you could do this multiple times over. You could have another activity that's associated with other fragments, especially in a larger application, which is why I say this concept of explicit intent is still important to know. And as a matter of fact, the concept of intent is still important to know because we also want to think about what an implicit intent is, and that's when we're calling something outside of our application, like the camera, like the video player, music player, or anything else like that. Let's take a deeper dive look now at how activities work and how intents work. So typically we'll start with an activity as we have here activity one, and then that will have some call. In this case, you see we're making a call to an explicit intent because we're saying specifically that we want to go to the activity two class explicitly. So when we call start activity, what's gonna happen is this new activity is going to appear and that's what the user is going to see. Now, explicit, implicit intents, a couple things that I've mentioned here already, just worth a bit of a summary. Explicit, we're calling the activity by name. Explicit ignores these things called action data and category. So that's typically within one single application. Implicit, we don't name a specific class we want to call. We're activating something outside of our application. And typically we'll pass a string that represents what we want to do. Now, a little tricky syntax here is that while we're passing a string data type, usually we're passing it as a constant. So you see intent.actionPick, that's just a variable called action pick on the class called intent. Under the covers, it's actually just a string though. So if you see this construction, intent.actionPick, you think, what is that? It's just a string. But action pick is very general. It says, I want to pick something. It's like saying, I want a baseball player without saying, I want a center fielder, I want a pitcher, I want a catcher. It's just saying, I want a baseball player. So we need to get from the very general, I want a baseball player to say specifically what type of baseball player we want. This is easiest to visualize with an example. So I have here a Kotlin project that I wrote that's in GitHub. And we see that we're starting with an intent and it is an implicit intent because I have an action constant. I do not have a class explicitly listed here in this intent. So implicit intent. So action constant, action pick, that means I want to open something. Then we have something called data, which we'll look at in just a moment. Data is the location where I'm going to find the thing I want to open. So think about opening a file and you have a directory where you want to open that file. So I want to open a file. This is the directory where I want to find that file. Next, we have a type which says, what type of file do I wish to open? Naturally, each of these items are configurable so that you see the action constant can be action pick. It can also be one of several other items that we have here. Action call, we want to place a phone call. Action edit, we want to edit a file of some type. And then you can see there are several others after this. But first of all, the action is the abstract description of what we want to do. Next, we have that concept called data, which in the case of opening something is typically a URL or a location of some asset on the SD card. Think of just a directory on your computer. Finally, we have the data type, which says what type of file do we want to open? 
And in this case, we can use the common MIME types or multiple internet messaging extension types. You probably recognize a lot of these. So for example, I want to open a text file. Then we could do TXT, CSV, or XML. Or we could just say text slash asterisk to open any text file. And that's going to determine the type of editor that we're going to open. We'll open some kind of text editor. Now, on the other hand, if we wanted to view an image, it would be a different viewer, wouldn't it? It would be something that could show a photo. If we wanted to open an audio file, it would be something that could play audio. Naturally, if we wanted to open a video file, it would be something that would open a video player. So you see the action, data, and type are all important in determining what the user is actually going to see. The action I want to open, the data where I'm going to find it, and then the type is going to determine what video player we're going to use or audio player or photo viewer. It's going to determine which of these viewers is the most appropriate. And really by specifying these things, we're leaving it up to the Android operating system to find the best match. In our case, we're opening an image. So take a look at these MIME types here. Once again, let's take a look at the example that I used. Action pick we want to open, data where we're going to find it, and finally type, we're going to open an image and notice that I've used the asterisk here to say any image MIME type works. Bitmap, PNG, JPEG, anything like that. Using the asterisk says open any of the above. This is a very powerful tool because if you think about writing an app and you want to do it very quickly, think about using other components that already exist instead of writing them yourself from the ground up. If you do that, you'll get your app to market much faster than if you wrote it all from the ground up, and it will be a higher quality app because you're using other components that have already been tested by somebody else, and so you don't have to do all of that manual testing. Now let's flip this on the other side. What if you wanted to write a component that other applications could use? In that case, you would write your component and you would give it an intent filter. And the intent filter is where you configure which actions which datas in which types you're going to allow to open your component. So in other words, if you wanted to write a video player that other apps could use, you might associate, with, associate it with the action called action pick. You might say, I want type video slash asterisk or video slash mp4, mp3, whatever the extension is that you wish to use. And then when the user clicks on something in another app and it opens a video player, that means that yours would qualify. Now, what if there are multiple to qualify? In that case, the Android operating system might give you a choice and say, okay, which one of these do you want to use to play your video? Now, in my particular Android phone, it's not a Google phone, but the vendor that I have for my phone they tended to duplicate a lot of things that already exist on the Google operating system. So I have two of a lot of things, like I have two alarm clocks, I have two browsers. And if your phone's like mine, you probably know what I'm talking about. You're in an application and it wants to open a web page. It'll maybe give you an option to say, do you want to open this in Chrome or do you want to open it in the browser that your hardware manufacturer put on this phone? That kind of chooser dialogue is what I'm talking about. So action and data are both things that you can configure in an intent filter. There are a couple other things that are similar. Uh, I've not found as much use case for these though. One is category, which is optional. That can be used for something like a launcher. In other words, when I tap on this icon, uh, what actually launches. And then extras, that's any data that you want to pass from your application into this thing that you're opening up. So that's a look at intents in the Android operating system, a very fundamental concept. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.